Kyle O'Reilly is currently signed to All Elite Wrestling, where he joined his longtime partner Roderick Strong in the Undisputed Kingdom faction, and they would go on to dominate the tag team division and become the AEW World Tag Team. What an idiot! What? what? What's that? Stop. The tip of the iceberg. You're just scratching the surface. I I'm sorry, Matt Taven. Did I misunderstand? He is I, and I am him, and I'm Matt Taven. So Kyle did not join the Undisputed Kingdom. Is that what you're telling me? No, he he's a member of the conglomeration. What the fuck is the conglomeration? Because today is today, and the word of the day is conglomeration. That is like literally the name you would make up for a faction to make fun of the fact that the wrestlers in it make no fucking sense together and don't belong together. Okay, fine. Well, fuck. At least they probably won't be fighting for custody of Kyle in like some weird three-way match between Orange Cassidy and Roderick Strong. Oh. Oh shit, that is exactly what they're doing, isn't it? Okay, well, this intro's totally fucked. Uh, let's talk about Red Dragon. I mean, that shit was cool. Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly kicking ass in Ring of Honor and NXT. I, that, was, that was cool shit. Uh, remember when they were in AEW? Yeah, those were the days. Let's remember that, and maybe by the time we get back to the present, this booking will all make sense somehow. So I packed up my car and uh, went to St. Louis, which was kind of centrally located in the U.S. There was a lot of groups around. It was close enough to the East Coast, close enough to the South. Um, and I, you know, I wanted to get in with Ring of Honor, and I knew, you know, I had to make myself available. So I packed up my car and went out there in 2009, and haven't really looked back since. For the past couple of months here in Ring of Honor, myself and Kyle O'Reilly have been thrown into the fire. We face teams like the Briscoe Brothers, teams like the Kings of Wrestling, and now May 6th. In Detroit, myself and Kyle find ourselves across the ring from the world's greatest tag team, more importantly, the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. And that fire that we've been thrown into, that same fire is being burnt inside of us. We want to be the best here in Ring of Honor, and in order to do that, you have to be the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Champions. This is our biggest shot, and we can promise you that we will not pass on this opportunity. You know, Adam talks about our tests lately. It seems we keep coming up short, and I'd be lying if I said I wasn't getting a little frustrated with that. Talk about the fire inside. That fire keeps burning hotter and faster and stronger than ever before. Even though we come up short, we keep standing up. And as we stood up, all of the fans stood up with us. So come Detroit, bring the German suplexes, bring the super kicks, bring the hoss of pain, because at the end of it all, I'm going to stand back up, Adam Cole's going to stand back up, and that flame is going to keep burning. O'Reilly would win the NXT Tag Championship with Bobby Fish toward the end of 2017. However, after Fish suffered a torn ACL and torn MCL in his left knee, he was replaced by Adam Cole. Eventually, Cole would be replaced by Roderick Strong, who would hold and defend the titles as a duo and hold them for almost 400 days, only briefly losing the titles in the middle of their dominant run. This yeah. is real. This isn't just uh, characters that we're playing on TV. This is, you know, right. genuine. In 2019, Bobby Fish and O'Reilly would reunite and reclaim the NXT Tag Team Championship. How does it feel? It just feels... How does it look? It feels normal. It just feels like we're... Just like a glove. Yeah. It fits like a glove. After a solid tag team run, O'Reilly would enter an epic year-long feud with Adam Cole in 2021. This would be the last real notable thing Kyle would do in NXT. He would not be called up to the main roster. When we were renegotiating, um, the powers that be were like, listen, this doesn't typically happen. Usually we re-sign guys six months out. But like the, the T talent relations at the time, I guess, let things slip or weren't as into re-upping NXT guys' contracts is the only explanation I could give. I, I, I really don't know. But um, yeah. I mean, I thought I had at least maybe six months to a year left. It was a real surprise to me knowing that it was coming up in December. Mm -hmm. uh, pleasant surprise, um, you know, just with the, the landscape and everything. Like it was, uh -huh. it was really kind of a blessing. That, I was given the opportunity to make my own decision and to have, like, I could stay, I can go. It wasn't made up for me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yep, like, I yep. feel for people who get released and everything, and that happens way more than it, it should. 
I it's know. awful. Um, I was just grateful that I was, you know, in a position to where I can kind of look at the landscape and see what opportunities were out there. And luckily for me, um, AEW found a place and I was able to, to jump ship, as it were. The AEW locker room is full of the guys that I came up with in this business that I've been yeah. friends with for years. And there was a lot of that in NXT too, but it seemed like every couple of weeks you'd look around at the locker room just getting decimated. And it's yeah, like, I it's just not a, not a very good environment, I guess, at that time. And um, I just wanted to go follow my heart and go where I'm going to be happy and go where I'm going to be utilized. It's like I yeah. felt, um, you know, to stay with WWE, was it was going to be to stay with NXT. And yeah. I was like, okay, well, at this point, after four and a half years, you don't really have a spot for Kyle O'Reilly on the main roster. I, I got the vibe that there wasn't going to be a spot for me up there. Well, I broke in in 2005, and at the time, Brian Danielson was the Ring of Honor champion and was just on this legendary run. And he was coming up to BC to work quite a bit because he was still living in Washington at the time. And so I got to you know chat with him and train with him a little bit here and there, but I never had a chance to, to wrestle Brian. And he's a guy that I've literally wanted to wrestle my entire career. And we've sort of been like ships passing in the night, like every, you know, once I kind of leveled up to go to that next phase of my career, he was moving on to the next phase of his career, Yeah. this, that, and the other. And so now, you know, not to say that I left NXT to hopefully wrestle Brian Danielson, but, you know, you got to go where the getting's good. And <laughs> I felt there yeah. was a chance. Maybe I could work this guy one day. Like it's so not like, I don't want to get too much into this conversation. Like it's kind of a private conversation that I had with Regal. So I was talking with Regal, um, before leaving NXT. And I'd mentioned this to him. Like, I don't want to seem like that guy that just wants to go somewhere to wrestle a guy, but he was like, no, I get it. Like when I left Britain, I just wanted to wrestle Ric Flair. I was like, really? Like, that's why you came to America? Yeah. But he was in WWF at the time and I came to WCW and then he came over to WCW and I got to wrestle Ric Flair. I was like, oh, that's wild. Like, that's such a cool little story. <laughs> I hope he doesn't cool. mind me sharing uh, on the yeah. sessions, but um, you know, so I, I really hope that I get a chance to wrestle Brian and uh, you know, there's a ton of young talent there that I think my style would mesh with really well. Mm -hmm. You know, a guy like um, Daniel Garcia and Lee Moriarty, like these guys that have a similar philosophy as myself yeah. in the way they like to present their, their style of wrestling. And uh, I think that's really cool. And that's what's so cool about AEW. There is such a, a wealth of talent and a wealth yeah. of different styles. And it's just, I'm so excited to get back in there. And whether it's tag or singles, just to tear it up and, and do what I think I do best. And that's just shut up and wrestle. You watched it. You enjoyed it. Make sure you comment about it down below. And leave a like and share this video with a friend. The uh, spot where Orange Cassidy sits down in the chair to let Roderick Strong fly over him, uh, miss him, that was really funny. I like, oh God, I gotta mention this. Uh, a while ago, I was complaining that the kingdom doesn't cheat enough. And the last like five or six times I've seen the kingdom, they've been cheating to win. And I think that's great. Like, this is supposed to be the devil and his henchmen. Adam Cole's been out of it for a long time, but uh, at least the kingdom are back to their cheating, winning ways. Here they were thwarted by the conglomeration, which I still do feel is kind of a silly faction name. I hope they play into that more. I like that, um, that Mark Briscoe, his uh, baby is actually an unofficial member of the conglomeration, which is just wild. Uh, I think they could have a lot of fun with it. They're not quite leaning into it enough, which was my complaint with the kingdom. They weren't leaning in to like being a heel bad guy faction. So hopefully the conglomeration will lean more just into this totally oddball situation that they have here. Uh, the story here wasn't about is Kyle O'Reilly going to, you know, stay with the conglomeration or join the Undisputed Kingdom. That really wasn't a part of it at all. There were a couple of spots where I thought they were going to set that up and do that, but they didn't ultimately do that. The story of this match was the winner was going to go to the casino gauntlet match at All In. The winner would be the first entrant, which almost seems like a really bad spot. It's like they're fighting for a really bad spot. But the story really wasn't about, you know these factions fighting each other. It was more about these three guys trying to get that spot at all in and just really going balls to the wall on each other. And you can really tell that Roderick and Kyle know each other very, very well. And if you want to know more about Roderick Strong, make sure you check out 
that video on this channel. It, it's going to be coming soon or it's already out if you're watching this late. So make sure you subscribe. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and, and, uh, and Facebook or wherever you check out social media. Tune into our live streams every Wednesday at 6 p.m. because that way you can find out when these new videos come out because YouTube isn't always going to tell you. In fact, I would suggest that you come back to this channel at least once a week and just see what's out there. And Wow, that I, I had my computer blow up the other week. So uh, it'd help if you watch the videos. What else can I say? I got the Patreon down there as well. Uh, check that out for just $1 a month. It really does help support the channel. Maybe we can buy a new computer that won't blow up in the middle of a, uh, in the middle of a filming. That'd be awesome. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. I had fun putting it together. I got to get out of here before that thing uh, just totally blows a gasket. And before I uh, go delirious and just start ba uh, babbling even more than I already have. But thank you so much for watching this and keep digging. He is I and I am him and I'm the undisputed trend, Matt Taven. And this dork behind the camera, some Melvin told me to say, grave diggers keep on digging, whatever that means. And I am AEW wrestler and Ring of Honor tag champ, Mike Bennett. And remember, grave diggers keep digging, but not the monster truck. Even though my son really likes that monster truck, I kind of like son of a digger and zombie. I'm going off on a tangent about monster truck because my son really loves monster truck, but we're talking about the YouTube channel. So make sure grave diggers keep on digging, baby. So this is Mark doing one half of private party saying what up to the grave diggers and he's doing your thing, bro. Alright, like, subscribe, and watch another video, or be cursed. Uh, if you're cursed, that means the grave diggers will keep digging your graves, so you probably want to do it.